What's up guys, welcome back to Cars Cost and Technology. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the launch control feature on the C8 Corvette and comparing it to just a standard full throttle launch without using it to see how much faster launch control actually is and how much of a competitive advantage you give up if you opted not to use launch control in a race or at the drag strip. I'm gonna show you a variety of different clips of the C8 Corvette launching with and without launch control, traction control on and off, as well as a couple different modes. That way you kind of have an idea of what you could expect with the different performance numbers and consistency. I think that this is a good topic to address because the launch control feature is great on the C8 Corvette, but it does take a lot of steps to engage properly. It's not something that you're gonna to wanna to use all the time. And I wanted to make a point for how fast the car is without having to go through all those extra steps and a little bit more spur of the moment performance rather than having to go through multiple button presses and flooring the brake, flooring the gas, waiting for the RPMs to level out. Something that's a little bit more finicky and maybe getting you the absolute best results, but something that you're not going to want to use all the time due to the wear and tear on the car, as well as the real tedious process to get it going. So anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoy these clips and we'll review after the footage and just go over some thoughts on the performance here, as well as what you could expect on your personal C8 Corvette. So as you can tell by those clips, launch control is definitely the fastest and most consistent way to launch the C8 Corvette with the average time being around 2.9 to even 2.8 seconds. Uh, you do notice that there was a difference in the PDR and the dash timer. Uh, part of that is because the PDR measures to the hundredth where the dash timer can measure only to the nearest tenth second. 
In one scenario, they were farther than a tenth of a second off, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Sort of odd that the two internal measuring systems for the timers don't line up perfectly, but either way, you know, 2.9, 2.8 seconds is still a very fast 0 to 60 time. I know that there are people uh, online posting 2.7, 2.6, 0 to 60 times, so obviously this car is capable of that, no question about it, but it's going to vary a lot depending on the road conditions, temperature, the amount of weight in the car, whether there's a passenger, how much gas is in the car, a lot of factors that go into getting that perfect time, especially when you're talking down to the tenths of a second or hundredths of a second. So I'm really happy to see some of these results and, uh, you know, 2.8 seconds, 2.9 consistently with launch control. And even without launch control, you know, I want to actually talk about just how fast a 3.70 to 60 time is with no launch control, just flooring it. And that's pretty much whether you have trash control on or off. Um, with it on, you get a little bit more of a consistent launch. You're not necessarily breaking loose and then trying to catch the back end again and put the power down. Um, that's really fast. You know, you think about even the Z51 uh, C7 Stingray Corvette, that was the time that General Motors posted was a 3.70 to 60 time. And obviously when a manufacturer posts a time, they're typically talking about really ideal conditions. I think a C7 Stingray with Z51 would be pretty difficult to launch exactly perfectly and get that 3.7. So the fact that on unprepped roads without launch control, you can just floor it on the C8 and get at or faster times is really cool. You know, I don't, I don't want to dismiss or, or downplay that at all, just how fast the car is even without using launch control. So in summary to me, you know, you definitely want to make sure that if you're racing at the drag strip or racing one of your buddies, you're using launch control. Obviously it's uh, quite a bit faster in some scenarios, a half a second to almost a full second faster, you know, and, you know, taking full advantage of that is definitely going to get you the most performance where if you're out cruising, just want to show somebody how quick the car is or want to have a little fun and then go back to kind of relax driving. No need to go through all the different buttons and modes and options. Just floor it, have some fun, and then let it go back to uh, standard driving after that. Whether you're in sport mode or even tour mode, the car launches really hard and puts the power down great. So I don't think you're going to be disappointed either way. But I hope that you found the comparison helpful just to see the side-by-side uh, -side in two different scenarios or, or approaches to launching this car. I will say for my personal results, I found that the um, sport mode with competitive driving mode enabled uh, with launch control was the best launching method just because in sport the suspension wasn't quite as stiff as in track seemed to allow the car to squat a little bit better put the power down it was also a little bit more forgiving if the back wheels did break loose because it was able to absorb some of the um, bumps or wheel hop or anything like that so i found that that feature was probably the best uh, for me but again everyone's situation is going to be different with the temperature road conditions weight in the car um, how you're launching it things like that but anyway guys thanks so much for watching look forward to hearing some of your feedback in the comments below on this topic and uh, we'll talk to you in the next video hope you have a great day but again to recap single press will turn off just traction control press and hold will turn off traction control and stability control in track mode if you press it twice quickly you will open up the performance traction management window now within this window you're going to have five different settings available to you and uh, you can basically scroll through these using the mode selector just like as if you're scrolling through track sport mode as you normally would and basically within these different options they're pretty self-explanatory but esc on obviously is going to stand for electronic stability control on so the first is going to be wet with esc on so obviously for wet track conditions dry with ESC on, so dry track conditions is going to limit or interfere less, but still give you some uh, interference from the electronic stability control. Then you've got Sport 1, which is going to be for, you know, your average driver, or intermediate driver that that's, uh, wants less interference, more of a sporty driving, but still have some interference from the uh, stability control if things get out of control. Then you've got Sport 2, which is going to turn off stability control, or Race, which is also going to have stability control off. These are going to be more of the completely unrestricted modes, going to be more of a similar experience to what you would have with traction control and stability control turned all the way off. But it's accessible through this performance traction management system, and it's going to give you access to uh, basically, you know, again, more refinement, more customization, leveraging these softwares uh, or, or these programs to help you rather than interfere or hinder your driving. So I think this is definitely the recommended way, especially if you have MagRide on your car, to utilize these menus when you're at the track and get the most of the software without it interfering and annoying you when you're trying to have fun with the car. Now, if you don't have uh, mag ride or even if you're not necessarily trying to access the performance traction management in sport mode you can access what's called competitive driving mode 
And this is basically uh, a similar mode of performance traction management with less of the customization options, but it's accessed a very similar way. And it's sort of confusing as far as how your car is equipped. Again, your options are going to be different whether you have mag ride or you don't. But if you don't have mag ride, you should be able to access this in sport or track. If you do have magnetic ride control, it should be just in sport. But you will access it the same way by double pressing the traction control button bringing up the competitive driving mode. Now, competitive driving mode is great because it does still give you, again, some of the benefits of the stability control software. Um, it does also give you access to launch control. So if you're going to be going to the drag strip, you know, it's very important. Take your, take your uh, mode selector over to sport, double click the trash control button. It's going to launch your competitive drive mode. Now you have access to launch control. You know, competitive driving mode here is a, is a good alternative for those of you that don't have mag ride or you're looking for similar to the performance traction management where your the system is a little more customized, give you some of the, uh, assistance when you need it, but not quite as much interference as if it's just fully on. Uh, so again, these modes can be really helpful, and I and I believe this is a much better route or approach if you're going to be taking your car to the track, whether it's the